is not Sam Wrestling. Introducing your host from New York, here is Sam Roberts. I, from the t- I started dressing up in co- wrestling costumes and ha- for Halloween in 1991. Like that was, you know, I'd said, I want to be a wrestler for Halloween in 1991 and throughout the rest of the time. I mean, until I was too old to dress up for Halloween anymore. I was a wrestler every single year for Halloween. And I th- it must have been 91. Yeah, it was 91 was Hulk Hogan. 92 was The Undertaker. Halloween, October of 92. I mean, Undertaker had been, I was never one of those like cool kids that was like, I always like the bad guys more than the good guys. You always meet adults. Adult wrestling fans will always tell you that as kids, they like the bad guys more than the good guys. But you never met any of them as kids. Like, I really think that that's just people who want to make themselves sound cooler as kids. Because you never meet them when you're growing up. But uh, The Undertaker had turned uh, good the Saturday night's main event after Royal Rumble 92. So like say February of 92 is when the undertaker becomes a good guy. And by October I'm dressed up as him for Halloween, gray leg warmers and everything. Reason I'm thinking about that is because I posted that picture last night as everybody was posting their thank you taker stuff on Twitter, kind of coming to terms with the fact that this is real, that the undertaker is leaving. And I thought like when, when did I fall in love with this character? When did this character start to mean so much to me? I mean, anybody that's a WWE fan, not just a wrestling fan, but specifically a WWE fan, because it's a different thing, man. The Undertaker means the world to you. I've never met somebody that's a WWE fan that doesn't on some level, it doesn't have to be your favorite of all time, but who doesn't on some level go like, yeah, you don't, that there's nobody better. You know, like the, 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 there's just this reverence for that character. I, for me, it, I, and I, I started to think about it as I was watching it. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, because after Survivor Series last night, I just sat there, like looking at social media, seeing if everybody was just kind of processing it the same way I was. And I just left the network on, started watching, you know, the, I watched the commercial for the icons. Uh, series that's coming out, which a little birdie had told me about. Um, But I'm very excited to see it. They're doing documentaries on Yokozuna, Rob Van Dam, British Bulldog, Beth Phoenix. Uh, Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm especially excited, obviously, about Yokozuna. Everybody knows what a Yokozuna fan I am. But, um, and then I watched, you know, the beginning of the Stone Cold interview with The Undertaker just because I'm just sitting there processing it. And I'm really not even paying attention. I'll go back and watch the Stone Cold interview with The Undertaker, you know, when I want to sit down and just absorb it. Um, but I was, like, I was just thinking about, like, when did my connection with this character start? And I realized, I, I know exactly when it really kicked in. You know, I kind of remember him and Brother Love being a tandem. You know, I, I Brother Love, I mean, Brother Love was one of the top heels in WWE at the time. Like, Brother Love was it was it was a hugely famous personality in WWE it was very good but i kind of remember him with brother love pretty much all my memories are, are with him and paul bearer i certainly remember when the brother love show went away i remember the funeral parlor first coming out on WWE superstars cuz that was my thing at the time i was living in in england i was living in the uk as a kid and WWF superstars I think would come on at nine o'clock. I want to say it would come on at nine o'clock on one of the Sky Sports channels. I think it was Sky Sports or maybe, I I, I think it was, I don't know. It was on Sky. And I couldn't stay up to watch it. I was too young. My parents wouldn't let me. So every Saturday night, I would put a tape in and I would tape it and I would wake up at like, I mean, Friday night and I would wake up Saturday at literally five o'clock in the morning. It'd still be dark outside. I'd wake up before my parents woke up. And I'd run downstairs to watch my tape of WWE superstars. And I would almost never get spoilers. There was one time where I got a spoiler, which was my sister came running into my bedroom as I was going to sleep. She's my older sister. And she goes, Sam, you never guess it. There's a new WWE champion. I don't think she probably said WWF at the time. There's a new WWE champion. I was like, who is it? She's like, you never guess, but you have one of his posters on your wall right now. 
and I'm looking around, and I had this like poster that came in one of the comics, the WWE comics that they put out at the time of Bret Hart versus the Warlord. And I was like, it's not the Warlord, is it? And she's like, no. And I was like, is it Bret Hart? She's like, yeah. I was like, what? But I digress. So I go downstairs every every morning, every Saturday morning, 5 a.m. and watch WWE superstars. Um, and so I remember every, like that was my Bible. That was my church. That WWE superstars, superstars was my church. I'm so glad that it's on, it's starting to get, you know, piled onto the network because it really was everything to me. That show was everything. And the funeral parlor was on superstars most weeks. And I'll never forget. It was, it was, it was the angle where the ultimate warrior got locked in the casket that made me, there was just something about it that I hooked onto the undertaker character that moment. And I never let it go. You know, like you, you, I was always interested in it and I was interested in Paul Bear, and there was just something different and the macabre of it all. It, it just, there wasn't anything else like it. There was something different about it, but it was, you know, the, the Undertaker opening the wooden casket from behind, hitting the, hitting the warrior with the urn, knocking him out. You know, the, the warrior who had previously been impervious to most pain, knocking him out. He loaded him up in that casket. And I didn't even know what a casket was at that point in my life, I don't think. Filled with the warrior logos and and they just leave him there and all like the the crew, the Pat Bucks and Adam Pierces of their day, the Jack Lanzas and the Rene Goulets and and all those people would come out and they would like have to drill holes in the casket and do everything they can to get it open. They finally open it up and Warrior is down and they've got to resuscitate him and he's like ripped up the inside of the casket, he's clawed the thing, trying to get out. And I was like, this is insane. And I never forgot the angle. And from that point on, I was locked into everything The Undertaker did. You know, that that never ended up leading to a pay-per-view match with him and The Warrior, which always bugged me because living in England, you didn't get the local feeds of house shows. Like if they did it at the Garden or if they did it at the Boston Garden or, or, or any of those places, you didn't get any of those matches. So I never got to see a Warrior-Undertaker match. I just saw what was on, you know, regular television. Um, and you know, that was mid 91. So eventually that would lead into, uh, the match made in hell at SummerSlam. It was Hogan and warrior versus slaughter general Adnan and Colonel Mustafa. But at the same time, they were doing the angle where Jake, the snake Roberts would turn on the ultimate warrior as he was trying to teach the ultimate warrior about the dark side. And uh, Undertaker and Jake would kind of become this team, which never paid off with the Warrior on television. But it did eventually end up paying off where Jake was in his rivalry with the Macho Man who was returning. And it was Jake trying to hit Miss Elizabeth with a steel chair and the Undertaker stopping him that turned the Undertaker into a good guy. Led to that second WrestleMania match, WrestleMania 8. Jake the Snake versus The Undertaker. Uh, and then, you know, it goes from there. You go to, that's 92 now. You end up going all the way to Survivor Series 92, the match, or, or SummerSlam 92. How did I forget? SummerSlam 92, which I was talking about on the bump. SummerSlam 92 was the first show I ever went to, live, in Wembley Stadium. And, you know, watching, watching The Undertaker come down the aisle in that hearse, because uh, go back and watch it on the network. Cause at Wembley stadium, they had this huge long aisle. It wasn't a ramp. It was a flat aisle, but it was just tremendously long. The LOD came out on their motorcycles and the undertaker came out standing uh, on a hearse. I don't remember if he was either standing through the sunroof or I believe he might've been standing on the back bumper or something like that, but he was carried out to the ring in a hearse. And it was really the first time he got an entrance that made it feel like, Oh, this is the phenom. This is something different. This, ladies and gentlemen, is, as Vince McMahon said at Survivor Series last night, and he still got it with that voice, The Undertaker. And you're like, whoa. That's when, the, you know, the entrances started where you're getting the goosebumps and everything, and it's, this is special. But that was his match with Kamala. After that, the Survivor Series 92 coffin match, the first ever coffin match in WWE. Undertaker versus Kamala. Then you're getting into 93, and 93 is when The Undertaker really, you know, when we start to win, now Hogan's gone. 
Macho, Warrior's gone for the second time. Macho is no longer a top spot guy. They're going with youth, and The Undertaker is is getting this sort of spot as a main event level good guy. You know, I mean, unfortunately, he spent some time with the Giant Gonzalez that year, but, you know, he ends up captaining a Survivor Series team with Lex Luger. I don't know if he was the captain, but he was high ranking anyway. But that's to me, I mean, it, it so so what I'm trying to say is the funeral parlor for me started the connection with the character and and it's gone on ever since. It was 30 years to the day. November 22nd, 1990 was The Undertaker's television debut for the WWE. November 22nd, 2020 was The Undertaker's official retirement from the WWE. 30 years ago, if you're downloading this podcast when it's released, 30 years ago today, People were talking to each other. Did you see Survivor Series last night? What about that guy on DiBiase's team, the Undertaker guy? Man, what was that all about? 30 years later to the day, it's, oh my God, did you see Survivor Series last night? Can you believe? Did you get choked up? Did you get emotional? It's wild, man. It's wild. I, uh, yeah, I got I got a little emotional and, you know, I, I, I did have to take some time to process it because it was like, you have so many different kinds of expectations going into it. There, the you know, you you connect on such a personal level with a character like that that there are ways that you want it to go for yourself. You know, Hot Dog was texting me while it was on, going like, you know, why wouldn't they just let him speak as himself? And it's like, dude, we've heard him speak as himself. I talked to him as himself. You know, on the Not Sam Wrestling WWE Network show, we heard him. We saw him on the Stone Cold show. We, we've seen him in People magazine. Like, we know him as himself. This retirement was about the character. It wasn't about the man. The, I, I, this ceremony was not about, I mean, to an extent, it was about giving the person his respect. But ultimately, it was about the connection between the character of The Undertaker and the WWE and the WWE universe and all the fans and everything. It was that that to me was what it was about. And that's what I'm sitting there and I'm watching this guy. And I'm like, man, this is my entire life. This is my entire life that I'm watching through here. And anybody who's even around my age, that's the emotion that you're experiencing. You're experiencing the same thing. That there's the, the it's this omnipresent character. Death and taxes and the undertaker in WWE. It's just always been, without question, you know? And the idea that it's gone and people go like, yeah, well, it's gone until the next time we've seen this before. Maybe, hopefully, to tell you the truth, I hope that he can't stay away. But look, he's never retired before. He hasn't. Like, he put his gloves down. The Roman Reigns thing was the closest he's ever come. But... The fact is that the Brock Lesnar loss was never supposed to be The Undertaker's last match. It's been now confirmed. If you watch the Brothers of Destruction documentary, they say it. The Undertaker was supposed to beat Brock Lesnar until the day of. The Undertaker, the decision for The Undertaker to lose that match didn't happen until the day of. That wasn't ever supposed to be a retirement match. That was never supposed to be his last match. He was supposed to win. They just changed their mind. And that happens, you know, the Roman Reigns WrestleMania match. Yeah, you know, in his mind, it was theoretically going to be his last match. He put his gloves down and everything, but they never said, tune in. This is his last match. He didn't go on a PR tour like he's been on, introducing everybody to the real Undertaker. I'll never call him by his real name. And... And 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 announcing, hey, tune in. This is the retirement of the character. It's never happened before. So, I, you know, I get people's skepticism, but I don't accept it. I don't accept it as a reality. And quite frankly, I'd be fine if he decided to come back. I would love it. I wouldn't feel abused. I wouldn't feel lied to. I wouldn't feel like, oh, you know, this whole thing of like, you know, well, for his own good, he's got to hang it up. I'll trust him with his own good. You know, he don't, he don't need my advice. I'm not a doctor. 
I'll trust him with his own good. If he wants to entertain me another match, I'm going to let him. I'm going to let him because I want to see it. I want to see it. I had to process the retirement because I was sitting there hoping that somebody was going to interrupt up until the last minute, literally watching him walk back through the entryway. Whatever, with each step. After the Survivor Series copyright thing came on, I was like, wow, we've seen this before. This could be something else. As he's walking, I go, wow, I mean, all the people that were there to celebrate him aren't there anymore, so there's nobody there to protect him. I mean, until the commercial came on that said, this is a pre-taped commercial for a series that's coming out next year. I was like, something could happen, something could happen, something could happen. And it wasn't because I thought it was necessary. It wasn't because the segment required it. It wasn't because that's how I wanted Survivor Series to end. It was because I don't want to say goodbye to The Undertaker. It's the same thing I said on the bump before Survivor Series. I don't want to say goodbye to The Undertaker. If somebody came to me and said, what would you rather do, Sam? Have some random dude come in and interrupt it and just throw together some WrestleMania match or say goodbye to the character? I go, random dude WrestleMania match thrown together, please. One more. Just watching his entrance. I'm like, I don't want this to go away. I never want this to go away. And it never will. It never will, you know. I mean, the legacy will live forever. The network lives forever. The tapes live forever. And even if the network goes away, you think I got rid of any of my WWE DVDs? I got all of them. All of them. I literally sold my entire DVD collection, except I pulled out all of the wrestling DVDs. All of them I still have. Oh, DVDs don't work anymore? Good. Every VHS tape I still have. All of them. I was a tape trader in high school. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of VHS tapes are in my parents' house. Sammy, can we get rid of these tapes? No, of course you cannot. You never know. You never know when I'm going to need to watch The Undertaker versus The Undertaker at SummerSlam 94. You don't know. You don't know. What if the network goes away? What if the internet goes down? What if HDMI ports don't work anymore and I need to connect through the RF inputs? Good thing I got this VCR and all these VHS tapes. I got to watch Undertaker matches. That's what it's all for. Uh, it was interesting that they brought out, it, it was interesting because there were so many elements, right? So the, the farewell of the undertaker, it goes, um, all of, you know, the people that meant something. I was glad that Vince McMahon came out. I was worried that he wasn't going to be a part of it the way he isn't a part of some stuff, but I was glad that he was there. Um, surprised that he was got his own thing, like that everybody that was there for The Undertaker split. Like, I don't know that they needed to have Kane. Corporate Kane could have said goodbye to The Undertaker. You know, I mean, I, I don't know that Mayor Glenn had to dress up as Kane for this thing, right? He didn't even talk. It would have been badass if he dressed up as 97 Kane. If they had found some 97 Kane gear and had him wear that, that would have been badass. They really should have had Brother Love come out, though, as well. Br Pritchard should have been out there. I don't know why. I, I should ask him at some point. Because Bruce Pritchard absolutely should have been in that ring. Bruce Pritchard not only had a lot to do with the creative of The Undertaker. He was The Undertaker's first manager. You see him on all these documentaries. He's producing all the vignettes. He had a ton to do with The Undertaker and Kane's storyline. I mean, this is... If anybody deserves to be out there, I would have thought that Bruce Pritchard would be out there. It was weird that he wasn't. It's odd. I wonder whose choice that was. I would love to know. Um, but seeing, you know, cool to see Big Show, Kevin Nash. By the way, you should have seen the text I sent to Corey Graves. Hey, idiot, it is WrestleMania 12. I hope it wasn't just me that texted him, but I, I texted him after he said, it was either WrestleMania 11 or it was 13, not 12, Cole. And I was like, hey, idiot, yes, it was 12. Undertaker versus Diesel was 100% WrestleMania 12. And then he was like, uh, I, I stand corrected. It was 12. But um, yeah, Kevin Nash and everything. Uh, I love that the, the uh, BSK was out there. Savio Vega. Good. Always great to see Savio Vega back on WWE TV. I'll tell you this. Assume if they were in shape to do it, the Godwins look bad ass. I would put the old Godwins on my wrestling television today. They looked scary. 
couple of old men, shaved heads, white goatees, tatted up, overalls with no shirt under them. The Godwins looked badass at Survivor Series. I wouldn't mess with them. Big Show, Shane McMahon, Godfather, Sean Hunter. That was my thing. I wanted to see Shawn Michaels super kick the Undertaker in the middle of the retirement speech lead to one more Shawn Michaels Undertaker match. I wanted to see something. I want and it was not because I didn't want to see a great retirement ceremony for the Undertaker. If that would have happened, I would have wanted another Undertaker retirement ceremony the Monday after WrestleMania. I just wanted another Undertaker match. Then they played the video package, which was great. Interesting that it wasn't it was very Undertaker-ish. It wasn't soft and emotional. It wasn't a tearjerker so much because it was aggressive. It was Metallica, you know? Then Vince comes out, does his deal. The Undertaker. And he says WWF. Very memorable speech from Vince McMahon, I think. And then Taker comes out, man. Spectacular entrance. I'm so glad the entrance went well because that's, I mean, you got one shot at it from the electrocution things to the slow walkout. I thought the the Thunderdome looked incredible with the with the leveled screens behind him in all purple. You know, and it just looked, and the fog was going and everything. I mean, they really used the production value of the Thunderdome for this. They got the thank you taker chants going. I wonder whose voices those actually were. I would love to know. And his speech was quick, man. And I'm sure people wanted more. And I'm sure if the Undertaker wanted to do more, he would have been able to. But he said. I mean, that's this is the quote that's going to live forever. It's time for me to let The Undertaker rest in peace. And you're like, oh, I mean, that one hit hard, man. That one hit really hard. I'm very emotional just thinking about it now. I mean, just sitting there I'm like, man, I'm not ready to say goodbye. Isn't that crazy? It's a character. But you know, The Undertaker is simply one of the greatest television characters of all time on any show. There's no getting around that. It's not a great wrestling character. It's a great character in storytelling. Television, film, books, anything. It's just a great character. Incredible character that, you know, meant a lot to a lot of people. I, you know, so, yeah, man. Um, I was glad, though, that that character got as much as that character got. I, I I was glad that the Undertaker ceremony um, was as good as it was for 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 who he uh, uh, is, I guess, and who the character was. And I have to imagine those guys are going to go out and have a good time this, uh, right after Survivor Series. They were going to have a they were going to go out and have a great time at the time of this recording right now. They're out there just living it up while we're sitting here crying like a bunch of dorks about some TV character that's retiring. <laughs> but that's okay. Can't be ashamed by it. There's no reason to be ashamed by it. If anything, take pride in it, man. I have I have a, 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 a an acrylic on velvet painting of The Undertaker. That should be hanging right here. 